The reason you need Bitcoin in your portfolio and all the institutions, every single one of them, is going to have it. This is the crazy thing. Every single one of them will, and I've been saying this for years, right? Get off zero. And all that means is, and I said 10 years, and now we're, you know, six years in, so it's only four more years from now. You will be deemed fiduciarily irresponsible if you have zero. I'm not saying you have to have 10 or 20 or 30, but zero is the wrong number. Welcome back to Unscripted Crypto. If you find value in our discussions, hit the like button and subscribe for more insights. Today, we delve into the evolving world of Bitcoin, guided by Mark Yusko's insights on its growing importance in investment portfolios. Yusko's argument that having zero Bitcoin exposure could soon be seen as fiduciary irresponsibility is more relevant than ever. The recent rally in Bitcoin's price, surging to over $42,000, the highest since April 2022, underscores this point. As we unpack Yusko's views, consider the current Bitcoin landscape. A 16% increase in value, fueling speculation of further growth, and the anticipation of Bitcoin ETFs in the U.S. market. How does this align with your investment strategy? As we transition, think about this. With Bitcoin's escalating institutional adoption and its recent price surge, is a zero Bitcoin portfolio a missed opportunity in today's financial landscape? I think Bitcoin is, is the true commodity. Like gold. Gold is both a commodity and a currency. It has its commodity uses and it has its money uses. It's the base layer of all money, right? Every central bank owns it. They build the money on top of it with debt. Great. I think Bitcoin replaces that. And Hal Finney actually said that, which is amazing. He's, you know, said it nine years ago. Crazy. He actually said, this is going to happen because it has lighter weight and greater anonymity than gold. And so... That is the true commodity layer. I think Ethereum, Solana, maybe a few others become more application layer. And, and then, then they got to be integrated with other real applications like L2s, L3s, L4s. And that business starts to accrete more value. So right now it's really Coinbase and a few others yeah. that, that captured value in addition to the protocol value. But the app layer hasn't even happened. Why? Because we're one month away, one month away from the beginning. This is the cool part. The story of the blockchain era starts January 1st, 2024. And 54, 68, 82, 96, 2010, 2024. The 14-year cycle starts January 1st. And then we run four years where it's awesome. And then we have a bust and that bust kills off a whole bunch of also rands, right? It kills off the pets.com and it kills off the web vans to then be rebirthed for the next leg up, which is the killer leg up. And that's when the fun starts. So we're, so you we're think four years, fun. we're going to get four years of bull market here uh, starting in 24? Well, I mean, not 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 full because because there'll still be the four year cycle that's different than the fourteen year cycle. So that that's built in. It all depends how how bad the next bear market, which will happen, you know, kind of June of twenty five ish, kind of June to to November of twenty five. Maybe it, maybe it moves to November of twenty five. But how bad that one is is dependent on how crazy the parabolic move above fair value. So fair value is going to go from 50 to 100 with the halving. Do we go to 150? Do we go to 200? You know, I was with Max and Stacy. We're at this uh, event in South Carolina. And, you know, Max is back saying, you know, 220s in play again, 220s in play. I'm like, stop, stop saying that. You said it last time. But if we go to that crazy 200 level, then the bear market will be bad, right? Because if you get so far above fair value, then it's got to got to drop. But I don't I don't think there's going to be as much leverage this time. I really don't. So I don't think we're going to go as crazy. And so I think the cycle will be more upish, less downish, and then more upish. Yusko's foresight from 2017 is increasingly validated by Bitcoin's current market performance. 
The recent surge to a yearly high of $42,000 is a clear indicator of Bitcoin's robustness in the financial market. This bullish trend is buoyed by the optimism surrounding the possible approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs in the US, with heavyweights like BlackRock poised to dominate this new arena. The implications for investors are profound, a potential shift in the investment landscape, with Bitcoin taking center stage. As we explore this evolving terrain, it's essential to balance excitement with strategic investment planning. How does one integrate Bitcoin into a diversified portfolio responsibly? It's about aligning with your risk profile while staying attuned to these groundbreaking developments. The money has not even started to come. It's different, right? It's different than the, the futures ETF, which that was buy the rumor, sell the news, because futures they can get naked short on the other side, which is why they approved the futures ETF in the first place. So the banks could go naked short and push the price down so they could accumulate at a lower price. Huh, that's been going on for years. This is real. Like this, to, In this world, you don't get to make paper shares. You got to buy the Bitcoin. And so the amount of Bitcoin that's going to get bought as the money starts to flow into this and go back and look at what happened with GBTC. When GBTC started to take money in, we went from 10 grand to 60 grand in like 11 and a half seconds. I mean, it wasn't 11 and a half seconds, but it was pretty, just go back and look at that first run up. Uh, and then Elon did his tweet and we went down in 50%. We went down 50% on a freaking tweet. And then we went all the way back to 69 because it was stupid, because fair value was 30 and we got to, you know, two, two plus times fair value. And then we had the bear market. So is this going to run you know, from, from 30 to 180 might, in fact, it might run more because the amount of money that's going to go into the CTF, big, really big. I mean, it's just big. It's just big. And, and, and there's no other place it can go, but spot Bitcoin. There's, it, it can't buy anything else. It has to buy the actual coins right. and that's different. And the problem is, there aren't that many to buy because you got the lost or stolen. You got the locked, right? Where there's a multi-sig problem or you got the, you got the hodlers. Now I, I'm, people say, I'll never sell. There's a price. There's a price for everything. And that's the way markets work, right? We sell, why won't sell? Would you sell at a hundred? No. Would you sell at 200? No. Would you sell at 500? Maybe. Maybe I saw a little bit. The dynamics of Bitcoin investment are unique. It's not just about trading on paper, but acquiring actual coins. This could lead to a substantial demand supply imbalance, potentially driving prices even higher. We are also on the cusp of another major event in the Bitcoin universe, the Bitcoin halving, anticipated in the next 132 days. This event, known to precede significant price increases, adds to the positive sentiment in the market. With these developments, Yusko's perspective on Bitcoin's indispensable role in modern portfolios gains even more weight. How should investors prepare for these shifts? And what impact will these events have on Bitcoin's value and its role in the global financial system? Before you go, we'd love to hear your thoughts. How do you see Bitcoin shaping the future of investment? Share your views in the comments below. Thanks for joining us at Unscripted Crypto. Stay curious and keep exploring the vast world of cryptocurrencies. Remember, for the latest in cryptocurrency insights, subscribe to Unscripted Crypto. Your engagement fuels our content. Keep questioning, stay informed, and we'll see you in the next video.